I think I was enormously impressed by the script, actually, because usually I used to read horror scripts and this was not a horror script. This had so much depth. Rowan Morrison is a schoolmate of yours, isn't she? And that is her desk, isn't it? Well, isn't it? I think you ought to know. And you are the biggest liar of all. Well, originally, um, rumour has it that Peter Cushing was supposed to play Sergeant Howie, and Cushing said that Christopher Lee had asked him, and the only reason he didn't do it was because he had other commitments. I was responsible, I think, for Woodward, because Callan was a big television series in England at the time, and, and he just was a great name for us. And it's always nice to give actors fun in what they're doing, um, to play somebody quite unlike that, slightly uptight Christian cop, uh, which he did gloriously well. Britt Eklund, at the time, she was a celebrity and a good name for the picture and had all the qualities that you needed for Willow in terms of the temptations that she was about to put in front of Howie. The other thing is that using Christopher and Ingrid, uh, in a way, made you expect things in the film that don't actually turn up, so it makes it more surprising what actually happens. Well, my part isn't very much, actually, you know, I mean, what can an infomaniac uh, librarian do? You know, not very much, but... I thought it'd be interesting to be involved in this kind of film because I thought at the time that it was going to be important. It was just freezing all the time because this is a springtime film and we were shooting October, November. And in Scotland, that's not funny. It's like Poland. I mean, <laughs> I'm one of those Polacks who can't stand the cold. He just had this shift on and he was barefoot. And he kept coming to me because I was sitting on the grass uh, pretending I was warm and and he kept coming putting his freezing place under my frock and I said Edward stop that they're gonna take you and burn you your feet won't be cold then the characters of the three leading actresses really come out when we were shooting the final burning scene on Borough Head out on the cliff tops in November and it was bitterly cold comes one moment when we have to reload the camera or something pause for two or three minutes so I told the wardrobe to take the coats out for the three leading actresses. And Britt Eklund just seized her coat, put it on. The Antolanta said, thank you very much, and put her coat on. And Ingrid Pitt said, if the extras haven't got time to put their coats on, I haven't got time. Which I thought was, you know, defines the three artists quite clearly. There was some wonderful material where Christopher talks about apples, as if they were kind of, you know, some wonderful gift from the gods. It had been cut down to appeal to audiences with an extremely short attention span. I saw it again, and I thought, well, I don't really miss anything. I know this is very controversial stuff, but I didn't really miss anything because I thought a lot of the things with the apples went on and on a bit, and we could do without it these scenes uh, needed cutting, but they didn't need completely obliterating. Robin Hardy went to the vaults of Shepperton Studios to look for the negative and the outtakes. He was met by somebody, who I, he doesn't remember his name, in a terrible state of agitation. There was a giant motorway being built, the M3, past Shepperton Studios, and uh, the order was given to clear out the vaults, get rid of all the old positive trims. The, the trucks came to take away all rubbish and trimmings and lots of stuff and some idiot put it with the wrong cans. The negative that came down from the lab was inadvertently put into the same vault and the vault manager clearly put it in with the positive. I can't remember anything like this ever ever happening in my entire life. I've made a terrible terrible mistake. The most awful things have happened. We've lost the negative and the outtakes. There's no question that all that stuff, including the negative from the Wicker Man, was inadvertently loaded and dumped into the M3. I have said over the years that I think it's probably the best film I've ever been in. I didn't think it was Citizen Kane on the Battle of Britain, you know, it was sort of quite a nice film. I think if it had a major release at the time, it would have been a reasonable success. I do not think, strangely enough, that it would have been the success it is. I think that the whole history of that movie is part of its strange credibility. This vehemence in <laughs> slogging to get distribution and paying money and the amount of people deceiving each other in, in the process of it, 
Uh, yes, I am actually quite amazed that the Wicker Man is still around. And I suppose the greatest thing that can happen to an actor is even if just once, just once in his life or her life, you do something that lasts. Well, I think the film is timeless in a way. So, uh, that's a great warm feeling. You may not believe in occult magic, but you'll be hard not to faced with the objects put in the way of this film succeeding, and it survives. The more you cut it back, the more it grows.